The images from today's terror will be forever burned into our minds, but what happened inside the 22 aircraft? Septembers ago, Marcus Kurgason was 32 years old living in New York City. Speared through the building into my watch. I'm a little bit late. Holy smoke, the building I'm supposed to be in is on fire. He was running late for a 9 o'clock meeting. That morning I woke up and was going to a seminar on the 44th floor of the North Tower uh, for the New York Society of security analyst. Marcus was under the World Trade Center's South Tower at 9.03 in the morning. I caught a glimpse that there was a fire way up in the North Tower and I thought, oh my gosh. And there was a huge explosion overhead, some hundreds of feet up. That's when the Flight 175 hit the South Tower. Knocked me off my feet. And time kind of slowed down immensely. I was face down on, on the sidewalk and somebody just grabbed me by my elbow like I was a rag doll, pulled me to my feet, and it was a firefighter, it said FDNY on his, on his helmet. And he just, he screamed, run for your life, so I did. He says he ran inside a pharmacy. On Broadway, just to get out of that um, mess and to get, you know, inside, indoors. And that's when I noticed um, there was a stack of disposable cameras. Marcus snapped these photos took this angle to show the amount of smoke that was filling the air. Before? So the South Tower had collapsed in between. And after? This series of photographs to the next one, where I'm on the north side of the complex looking south. The South Tower is gone. But one picture he could not yeah. take. He's a true hero. He's my hero. Is of the one who saved his life. This is Eugene Whelan. He doesn't need a photo to remember what this firefighter did. I, my son was born in July, so Three months later, he almost lost his dad in, at the World Trade Center. And I just wanted to convey to, to the Whelan family that there was a little boy that still has a daddy because of the sacrifice of their son. 4,700 people are still missing, and many of those individuals, several hundred of them firefighters. Whelan and, and many others were never recovered. As you can imagine, this is a very difficult time for the people here in the city of New York. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. Empty graves haunt Marcus to this day. There's n there's nobody buried in that gravesite. On 9-11, as his pockets filled with debris from the falling skyscrapers. This is a piece of the South Tower. Marcus instinctively yet unknowingly documented history, and he would do it again nearly 22 years later on May 6, 2023. Oh my God. Just in front of the store. I did that. Um, and turn it all over to the FBI and to the Allen PD. It was the day of the mass shooting at the Allen Premium Outlet. Oh, he has been hit at least twice. In both situations, I was going to work. I was at work. Now living in North Texas, as manager of a store called Zwilling, Marcus locked down with customers inside. Elio Kumana Rivas, one of eight victims, was shot and killed outside his doors. There was nothing he could have done to save him. It, it is sickening to think about. He learned Elio was a father from Venezuela, and his family was struggling to fly his body home. So in the months after the shooting, Marcus shared Elio's story and pushed for help. I'd like to raise awareness that uh, this is a worthy cause. It's particularly important to me to have the remains of Elio Camano Rivas returned to Venezuela, and it did take three months, but it eventually happened because only then could his family get proper closure. The Whelan family never got that. He made sure Elio's grave did not sit empty. It's something you never forget. Two states, 22 years apart. Tragedies unparalleled line up for Marcus Kurgason. I'm Tiffany Liu.